Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about data types in C Sharp. In the previous tutorial, we briefly talked about what on a very basic level namespaces and classes do. We've also seen how to print to the console and wait for input from the console by calling methods on a console class like right line and read line. But if you don't fully understand classes and methods yet, that's completely fine because they are big topics and we will cover them in future tutorials in great detail, so stay tuned for that. We also talked about statements and literal expressions. However, literal expressions just aren't enough. What if you, for example, want to store a number, do something with it, like print it to the console, and then multiply it by some value and print it again. Well, that's when variables come into play. Let me show you an example and then I will explain more about data types and also a way to manipulate values of variables. So, for example, we want to store a number, which we can do like this, and I will in a little while talk about uh, what this actually all means. So, int x equals... 5, then we want to print the value of x to the console, so uh, x, then we want to multiply the value of x by something, so x equals x times, for example, 3 or 4, doesn't matter, and then we want to print it again, console.writeLine x right and now console dot read line as you already know from the previous tutorial this is mandatory so that console doesn't close and the application doesn't close and uh, start 5 and 20 so this example is very nice but now let's talk about what data types and variables actually are in great detail so variable is like a box which holds some value and data type is like size and shape of that box which tells us what kind of values that box can hold for example in the same way that you cannot put an elephant into a tiny box you cannot put a huge number into a data type which can't hold such huge numbers. As you've seen in the example, each variable has to have its own unique name by which it can be accessed from the code. Like for example, x is the name of this variable. Let's talk about the most common data types in C Sharp and let's also make variables. So there is a boolean or bool data type, which can either be true or false, so bool true false equals true and it also can be false and if you want to print it to the console true false we can print it and it will display false then there are many numeric types but we will cover only four of them in this tutorial because these four numeric types are the most common ones so there are int which is short for integers then long integers floats and doubles int and long can only hold integers that means numbers without decimal points and long can hold very big numbers whereas integer can only hold something approximately 2 billion you can find out what a maximum value is for each of these data types by typing name of the data type dot max value so max value for integer is uh, something more than 2 billion and uh, Max value for long is more than 9 quintillion or something like that. It's enormous. N 9 quintillion. Yeah, really big number. Then float and double can hold floating point numbers. 
and float is less precise than a double and float literal has to be suffixed with f. Then there are data types which can hold text and those are either car which can hold a single character so for example c and string which can hold series of characters cool car is denoted as apostrophes and string is denoted as quotation marks now pretty often you're gonna need to convert between various types in this tutorial we're going to take a look at numeric conversions converting to string and also converting from string which is also known as parsing there are two types of numeric conversions implicit and explicit we can use implicit conversion when we can be sure we aren't gonna lose any data what do I mean by losing data? Well, remember that for example an int can hold numbers up to approximately 2 billion, right? So int i equals int dot max value, which is approximately 2 billion. Whereas a long can hold numbers as big as 9 quintillion, as we've seen already. So long l equals long dot max value which is nine quintillion therefore when we want to convert a long which has a value of more than two billion to an int we will lose quite a big amount of data four bytes to be precise that means that we must assure the compiler that we know exactly what kind of craziness we are doing by using an explicit cast so an implicit cast is, for example, when you want to convert an int to long because there is just no way you can lose some data. So long L2 equals I. No problem, no error. But when we want to do the opposite, so we want to convert long to an int, i2 equals l as you can see we have an error right cannot implicitly convert long to int an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast yes we are missing a cast and you cast by doing this two parentheses and you write a data type to which you want to cast in this case we want to cast to an int and now the compiler is happy because it knows that we didn't just forget that we can lose precision, but we actually really want to convert a long to an int. The same applies to floating point numbers. So, for example, we can use implicit cast when we want to convert a float to a double, because double can hold larger values and also can uh, be more precise. So, double d2 equals f no problem here because we cannot possibly lose any data but if we switch this around so float f2 equals d the compiler complains and we can fix this by writing a cast so float and now the compiler is happy again We've just taken a look at numeric conversions, but in programming there is a huge need to convert all kinds of data to string and in turn also from string. For example, when we want to write something to the console, it must be converted to string. Also, when we use console.readline, whatever is typed into the console is sped out as a string. Then it's our role to deal with all of these string conversions. Let's first look at the toString method. Every data type in C Sharp has this method. Even types that we create because of reasons that I don't want to discuss just yet, but you can be sure that cool stuff is coming later in the series. Converting to string is really simple. Let's for example create an int, int i equals 5, 
and let's create a string s and uh, equals i obviously we cannot do that because we cannot implicitly convert int to string what we need to do here is type i dot to string we just we access a method on the integer i so to string two parentheses because we call a method in the same way that we call read line here and now it's all good now we can print this string to the console s and print it we can obviously also print an integer straight into the console so we can do something like this console.writeline i because the write line method can also accept an int and not only string it actually converts the int for you as I've said earlier, whenever you use the console.readline method, it returns a string containing all the characters that were written in the console. When we say that a method returns something, we mean that it spits out a variable of some type, which we can assign to some variable that we create, or use it as an argument for another method. What do I mean by that? Well, let's create a string variable and set it up to contain whatever was written in the console. We can do it like this. String s equals console dot read line. Then in turn we want to print the value of s back to the console. Alright, let's test this. So, hello and it prints hello back to the console. This call to the readline method also returns a string, but because the string has no variable to go into, it just sits there and does nothing, except for waiting for the termination of the program. Let's also demonstrate that you can pass a return value of a method to another method as an argument. So, for example, we can condense this example by deleting the declaration of a string variable and in the console.write line we will write console console.read line and now what happens is that uh, the console.write line executes but it will execute with whatever we have previously typed into the console so it will actually do the same thing as the previous example so hello and it will print hello again so far when we use the console.readline we stored and passed the return value as a string but sometimes we don't want to do that suppose you're creating an application to determine the area of a square and you want the user to specify the length of a side of the square the user types the length to the console, presses enter and expects a reasonable output. For that to happen, we cannot use the return value of console.readline as is, because it's obviously not possible to perform numeric operations like multiplication on a string. We need to convert it to a numeric type, for example a double, in order to be able to multiply it that's where the parse method comes in handy so we can for example do this we want the user to type in a number so we will make a double double d equals console.readline read line and the compiler complains because we cannot implicitly convert type string to double. What we need to do is type double dot parse and we want to parse whatever comes out of the console dot read line. And then we want to do something with this value and we want to calculate the area of a square. So we will do 
double area equals d times d, so d squared, and we want to print the area to the console. All right, and now we can test this. So, for example, 6, it should print out 36. And yeah, it does print out 36. Awesome. But what if, for example, the user types in some other characters? Let's test it. So, instead of a number, we will type hi. And uh, system.format exception. Input string was not in a correct format. We will take a closer look at exceptions later in the series. I really encourage you to go to the link in the video description, which will take you to an exercise on resocoder.com, where you will have a few coding assignments and questions. There will be hidden answers, but do yourself a favor and go through the assignments yourself, because learning by doing is the best way to make newly acquired knowledge stick. I hope that you learned something new and valuable from this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like and also don't forget to share it. If you don't want to miss any new tutorials, subscribe to this channel. And if you really don't want to miss anything, hit that little bell button and see you in the next video.